let's take the Aussie dollar. Okay, so Aussie dollar since middle of March has been on a tear. You take Kiwi dollar, which has also been on a tear, in some sense even more of a tear, been a little bit stronger than in, in around the same time. And then what you do with Aussie Kiwi, which is the cross or result of that, is you kind of get an up-down market. You know, once we hit March, it's been very choppy. In fact, look at each candle. Blue, red, blue, red, blue, blue, red, blue, blue, red, red, blue, red, blue, red, red, red. You know, it becomes a mess. So if you're holding the position into a new daily candle, you may be going the right direction to start off that day, but then the next day it might reverse against you. That's not what you're looking for. We trade directionally. We pick a direction, north or south, long or short, and we want it to go in that direction and keep going in that direction as much as possible. But when you trade strength against strength, then the, the battle becomes a little bit harder to decide. If you were to bet on um, two particular fighters, you know, it would be an easy bet if you knew, you know, that one person was much stronger than the other. Your payout may not be as much uh, in terms of the betting and the way they do odds, but the bottom line is it would be much easier to decide. When it's strength against strength, it becomes a little bit more complicated to really siphon out the details that really communicate, hey, which one's stronger than the other, and then that's the one I either want to go along with or I want to go short the other currency. So I usually look for opportunities where there are going to be times where not all the currencies are going to be exhibiting clear patterns or great environments or anything like that. And so what I start doing is I start saying, well, wait a minute. If as a whole they're not exhibiting exceptional patterns at the moment, especially with the recent choppy market, well, then what I want to do is I want to look for unique environments. And a unique environment is when I can find something with an extreme polarity, something that's really strong against something that's really weak, or something that's really weak against something that's really strong. And as a whole, the currency that is kind of suffering a lot right now is the U.S. dollar. Aussie's been killing it. You know, if we look at Aussie dollar on a daily chart, you know, all-time highs are within 10, 20 pips of all-time highs. It's just been, you know, just brutalizing it the last month. We take it to Euro dollar. Same thing, it's just been pushing hard against it. In fact, almost all year it's been pushing hard against it. You know, it opened at 34-ish, and here we are, 46, almost 47, so up 1,300 pips for the year. We take sterling dollar. Sterling dollar, though not quite as strong, is still strong against it. So a lot of currencies as a whole are really kind of punishing the dollar. So the dollar then goes into the weak category because it's been losing against the majority of currencies. Now, the sterling has been doing well against a fair amount of currencies. You know, it's it's slightly up for the year against the yen, but it's been kind of a rocky road. In fact, trading yen has been very choppy, so I've been very selective when trading any yen pairs. Trading the Aussie, the sterling probably isn't doing so good because the Aussie is just really strong right now. So it's down against the Aussie, but against the CAD... Probably, you know, right here it is right around the same. So as a whole, the sterling is slightly more bullish against the basket than bearish. Euro, a little bit better situation. Against the Swiss, it's barely up against the year, but up a little bit. Against the yen, very similar picture to sterling yen, except it's a little bit higher. It's maintaining a lot more of its strength. It's holding ground. Uh, if we compare it against the sterling as a whole, it's also gaining against the sterling as a whole. So the euro has a greater polarity in terms of strength than the sterling does as against a basket of currencies. So we have euro that's been strong. We have uh, sterling, which has been strong, not as strong against the uh, as a basket, but is still as strong. We have Aussie, which is really strong against a lot of currencies. It's up on the year against the yen. CAD, it's probably maintained some decent strength against it, so not bad at all. But there's one instrument that all these pairs are really struggling against, and that's the Swiss franc. 
The euro, which has gained a tremendous amount against the basket of currencies as a whole, has been struggling really hard to gain against the Swiss franc. So something that is really strong isn't gaining much ground. We take a look at the sterling, which has been a little bit weaker against a basket of currencies, still up overall, but weaker in comparison to the euro, and it's losing a lot more ground against the Swiss franc. So this is a currency that's generally strong as a whole. It's net strong or net positive against this basket, but yet it's suffering pretty deeply against the Swiss franc. We take the Aussie, which is as strong against a lot of pairs as a whole, and it too is slightly underwater where it started the year against the Swiss franc. So we see things that have, again, Kiwi dollars, same thing. So we see a lot of of instruments that possess a lot of strength, but that as a net whole are negative against the Swiss franc on the year. And that really communicates to us that in relationship to them, the Swiss franc is probably the stronger currency. We've had an immense amount of crazy things that have kind of kicked off the year, or, you know, we're just happened recently in Japan. There's still a lot of risk involved in the market, although there are signs that things are recovering. But the bottom line is the Swiss franc is, is going up against strength, and it's beating it. So in some sense, the Swiss franc might be one of the strongest currencies as a whole. So we can put that in the very strong category. Strong because when it matches against other strong currencies, it does really well, and it's a net positive against them. So what I like to do is I like to pair that up with something that's really weak. And as we said in the very beginning, U.S. dollar is pretty weak as a whole. And so when you look at the dollar Swiss chart, it's the weakest of all of them. It's at the all time or within half a, I don't know, half a cent of the all time lows against the Swiss franc. And as we can see, the majority of the candles throughout the year have been red. There's only really been one, two, maybe eight to nine days on the year. And here we are at the end of the fourth month. Eight to nine days on the year where the dollar Swiss had a very strong gain against, or the dollar had a very strong gain against the Swiss franc. Eight or nine days out of the last four months. That's not too impressive if you want to be on the bull side. In fact, it's really communicating that the market is overwhelmingly bearish and continues to maintain its bearishness against the dollar here, particularly with the Swiss franc. 